Hi everyone. Today we're going to be summarizing the Sumerian literary text uh, Lugal Banda and the Mountain Cave. Uh, this is at least one of two stories about Lugal Banda. The two stories might be part of the same story. Uh, they might be two distinct stories that are just closely related. But this one is about but both stories are framed concerning uh, Lugal Banda, who is a warrior in the um, in the army of a king named Enmerkar, who's king of Uruk, uh, during the early part of the early dynastic period. And um, of course, this is a mythological text, um, legendary. So um, Lugal Banda is uh, one of well, we'll talk about it as we go. But essentially, Enmerkar, the king of Uruk, decides he's going to go on a campaign uh, over to the east and destroy this rebel city uh, called Arata. So um, he takes his army, and Lugabanda is one of the one of his top warriors, and he gets sick. And um, so both of these stories, Lugalbanda and the Mountain Cave, and the other is Lugalbanda and the Anzu Bird, uh, both of these are framed in that storyline that Enmerkar is taking the army of Uruk and going um, over to Arata to destroy it, and Lugalbanda gets sick on the way, and what happens to him, so the events uh, surrounding that. So let's do the first one this week. And next week we'll do Lugalbanda and the Anzu Bird. Both are really cool, obviously, because it's Sumerian. And, uh, yeah, I think this will be good. So, as I said, Emmerichar, king of Uruk, is, has decided uh, that he's going to go march out with his army to destroy the city of Arata. Now, in his army, there are these, like, semi-divine, semi-human warriors. There are seven of them the text says, and it says that Lugal Banda was their eighth. So, you know, you can you can kind of tell that Lugal Banda has this um, sort of, he's, he's edging the human divine um, border. He's somewhat in a liminal state, maybe. And of course, later on, Lugal Banda is considered to be a deity, so, or at least, um, you know, have divine features. So, um, he's one of the, the main warriors. Well, as I said, halfway to Arata in the mountains, Lugalbanda falls ill. And his companions, his comrades, decide, well, they, they can't take him back to Uruk, but they can't bring him along because he's, he's really, really ill. And so what they decide to do is put him in this mountain cave and to take all of this, these delicacies, cheese and figs and dates and all these sweet meats and these other, um, you know, high quality foods, along with a whole bunch of different types of beers, and place them around him, essentially setting him up um, as, as setting these up as funerary rites. Uh, they put a, an axe at his head. They put a uh, dagger on his chest. And even though Lugalbanda is awake during this, you know, the text talks about how he's, he's crying, but he can't speak. And they, they essentially determine he's probably going to die. But the text says if he does, if he does, you know, come get back on his feet and he does recover from this, um, and the, the, you know, the evil spirit that is causing this illness departs from him, then this food and this beer will be here for him to rejuvenate himself and to uh, to get better. So um, they leave, and of course they're all very upset, lots of lamenting, but they continue on to go uh, on the campaign tour against Arata. Well, two and a half days after they leave, as night falls on the third day, Lugabanda begins to pray to the deities that are in the sky and. Um, he prays to them as they as they appear in the sky. So he begins by praying to Utu, who is the sun god, as he is setting, and says, "Please heal me, heal me of my illness." He then prays to Anana, who is the evening star. Then he prays to Nana, the moon, 
and then finally to Utu a second time as Utu um, comes back up in the morning. And of course, the gods answer his prayer. And the text says, the youth Utu extended his holy splendor down from heaven. He bestowed them on holy Lugobanda in the mountain cave. His good protective god hovered ahead of him. His good protective goddess walked behind him. The god which had smitten him stepped aside. So you can see the, the cause there of his illness, according to the text. Now, in spite of having all of these um, you know, different types of foods, a variety of really nice foods there for him to eat. Uh, he doesn't eat them. What he does instead is walk outside and Utu causes these plants to grow and the water uh, flows down to him. And so he eats the plants and he drinks the water and he's you know rejuvenated. So instead of, um, instead of, you know, eating the food for himself. You know, Lugalbanda, well, we can talk about this later in another, maybe in a daily data, but Lugalbanda has some very, um, he's considered to be very holy. And so, you know, one of the things that he does, instead of eating this food himself, he, he keeps it, and we'll talk about it in just a minute, ultimately uses it to prepare a banquet for the gods, right? So he's this very pious, you know, ascetic, you know, he's, he's, he's not doing it for himself, he's doing it for them. So, he goes out and he sets a trap to catch this wild bull. Uh, then he takes the provisions that were left behind by his comrades and having no knowledge, the text is interesting, having no knowledge of how to bake cakes or how to use an oven, he makes cakes, with the text says, with only seven coals. So one of the things that shows up in these, um, these Lugalbanda and Merkar texts is that... Um, Certain certain things that are um, that are not known that haven't been invented yet um, are just figured out by these um, early um, early rulers, these legendary rulers. So this is one of those places where you, he doesn't know how to bake cakes, he doesn't know how to use an oven, but with only seven coals, he figures out how to do it on his own, which you know, of course, is incredible. So, um, he catches the wild bull, and then he catches two goats. And after he does this, uh, a very, he does a very Mesopotamian thing. Um, Gilgamesh does it. Um, Gudea does it. Um, he lies down to have a dream, specifically to have a dream. Not to sleep, but to have a dream. And the god Zangara the god of dreams, asks him, who will slaughter a brown wild bull for me? Go figure, he's just caught one. So the text ends with him preparing a banquet for An, Enlil, Enkian, and Horsog. Um, so he takes this bull, prepares it, um, and the gods come and they consume it. The text at the end is somewhat fragmentary. It ultimately breaks before uh, the end of the tablet. And um, unfortunately, it's a, the, the text is a little difficult at that stage. Um, but it's, it's because of this. What was is one of the reasons that we think that this can't be the end, right? Is this really the end of the story? Or does part two... Um, consist of the next story, Lugalbanda and the Anzu bird. And next week, uh, we'll summarize Lugalbanda and the Anzu bird because it, it picks up with him in the mountains. And he decides that he's, just to give you a teaser, he's going to um, interact with the Anzu bird to try to get out of the mountains. So um, the big thing to remember here is, of course, um, Lugalbanda is this pious righteous, whatever, holy um, God that does all things right by the gods, and instead of, um, you know, eating the food for himself, for example, he, he gives it to the gods, and this, uh, this, this sort of piety, you know, he's, he's favored by the gods, and so the gods heal him uh, from his illness. Okay, next week we'll pick up with part two, Lugalbanda and the Anzu bird. Thanks.